All right, guys, back with another portable Clint. Guys, you may recognize this next guy from Drunk History. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Kakowski. <laughs> Woo! Come on in. What? You call me Craig Kakowski. Wait. <laughs> I'm kidding. Craig Anstead. Hey. <laughs> Does anybody ever call you Craig Kakowski before? You know what's funny you say what? that? What? Why? I was at, I was in, uh, <clears throat> I never said so. No. I was in Westwood and I'm walking there and there was a movie premiere going on. And how crazy is this? Some guy, like one of those autograph guys, runs up to me and he goes, Craig, Craig, can I get your autograph? And I go, I was like, wow, someone wants my autograph. Like, what the hell? And he hands me the picture and it was Craig Kakowski. <laughs> so he just accidentally got my name right, like my first name. He didn't know who I was at all. That's crazy. Isn't that bananas? Yeah, like, that is I bananas. I apparently look enough like Craig Kakowski. Craig, scoot up a little bit, dude. Right, get in here. Right. Craig Paul Anstett. Is yep. that correct? Craig's an awesome, very dear friend of mine. I knew his last name. Um, Craig, when and why did you move out to Los Angeles, California? Well, I couldn't handle having a real job anymore. What real job did you have? What, what real job did you leave to come here? Well, that's, uh, I mean, I was kidding, but I mean, I was, uh, I was renting apartment buildings. I was a leasing agent for an apartment. You? Building. Well, I did that in order to, it was like a stepping stone. I moved from uh, Chicago land, the suburbs of Chicago. I moved to the Phoenix area because that's where my parents were. So I could, what do you think I'm lying? No, I'm just <laughs> laughing about Craig Kikowski. <laughs> <laughs> so I moved to Phoenix, like my goal was, all right, I'm gonna go to Los Angeles, but then I, you know, I hadn't seen my parents in a couple of years, so I moved to Phoenix. I'm like, I'm gonna, you know, hang with my parents for about six months. This is probably in 1996, I think. Okay. So I moved down there with my parents. I moved in with my parents and I stayed there. And then it was like, like I, I started dating a girl, and I got, you know, you just fall into that. I'm like, sure. what? I'm like, what? What? what's going? On? And then I just fell into this like normal life. And then, do uh, you want me to keep going? <laughs> well, give me the short version of the uninteresting stuff. Go ahead. Well, the, the interesting stuff is that, you know, I had, I, I only had like a couple grand saved. And I'm like, well, I, I wanna, this was probably in 1998-ish or 97 when the internet, the initial internet stock boom happened. Okay, you're a big stock mm -hmm. guy. Well, not a very successful stock guy, but um, th at this time, you didn't have to have any brains whatsoever to make money. Like, the, like when eBay and Amazon and all those companies came out, it was like a, just like a gold rush. Like the market would just, everything would skyrocket. It, literally in a day, you could go up 200% on your money. So I started with $1,000 in an E-Trade account. And within six months of doing that, I had enough money to come out. To, I, I was like, all right, I got enough to go to LA and then I can, do this day trade stocks while I'm, you know, trying to pursue my career. But like I, I have my own nest egg. Sure, know? sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Craig, go back a little Sorry. bit further. <laughs> no, I know, but go back a little bit further. I thought you were delivering Ferraris to Michael Jordan or something like well, that. Well, I did that. Uh, I did that in the late '80s. Tell me a little at, bit about that. Well, I worked at a place called Lake Forest Sports Cars in Illinois. Okay, uh, it's where all the pretty much all the anyone who's a big sports, I don't think it's like that anymore, I don't, I don't know, but it was where everyone who, anyone who was like a, you know, Bulls player, baseball, whatever, if you bought an exotic car in the north side of Chicago, you most likely bought it from Lake Forest Sports Cars, the Ferrari, Maserati, Lamborghini, and all that. Okay. Yeah, and I got to deliver it five times. Okay. A couple, I drove it a couple times, a black uh, Ferrari 512 TR. Okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah. All right, you move out here. When did you move out? When did you roll into town? And what car did you drive into town with? <laughs> you just sound like you're about to laugh at everything. Else. <laughs> like, it's, like I'm such a like. You guys, like, guys got to hear this. <laughs> you aren't gonna believe no, this. No, 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 Craig. I always uh, laugh right. when I talk uh, to you. Right. So how did I? Wait, what car did I roll into town? Yeah, with? because you've always had oh, these well, neat cars. Well, things. Right, I appreciate right, your car. All right, right. actually, I life. actually did have a really cool I car. I know you did. It was a 1991 Dodge Spirit. And you're like, that's a piece of crap. Yeah. It's a Dodge say. Spirit RT Turbo. And they only made, no, check this out. Okay. They only made about 700 of them that year. I, I bet. Okay, well, it had a 2.2 liter, 16 valve, turbocharged intercooled motor. Okay. It means nothing to you. Great. <laughs> 
But in 1991, this thing came from the factory. This was the fastest four-door sedan made in 1991. Okay. What you was know? the name of it called again? A Dodge Spirit yeah, RT there you go. Turbo. Okay. That's a so cool you car. roll Dude, into town. You roll into town. What, it was what a five-speed sedan. That was, I, okay. it was faster than a BMW okay. M5. Okay. All right. You roll into town. What year? I believe it was 98, 99. Did I already ask this question? Why, no, are, you, no, why yeah. are you being so combative here? No, I'm not. No, no. I'm try I'm literally, I was just like, I believe it was, <laughs> okay. it was like the tail end of 98, I believe. Okay. 90, it must have been. That's, okay. Yeah. Is this when you lived in that place in the valley? No. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> My life's not this bad. <laughs> Uh, and it hasn't been this Anyway, I, no, I, I moved to Glendale initially. Oh. Because when you moved to L.A. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go, when, you look, when you move to L.A., you look on a map, and you're like, all right, where, are, you know, I don't want to live right in Hollywood, because that might be dangerous. I don't know what that's about. So I just looked on the map, and I go, oh, well, Glendale, that's close enough. You know, because yeah. you, think, you think, oh, it's just a short drive. Sure. <laughs> you know, meanwhile, it's like an hour and yeah, 40 minutes yeah, in the yeah. middle of traffic. <laughs> exactly. It's only like, you know, 10 miles. All right. <clears throat> So I lived there for the first. Who like, did you live with? Uh, my girlfriend at the time from Arizona. I was like, I'm I'm going to L.A. You want to come? She came with, and like within six months, she's like, I can't just can't do this. Tomorrow? No, her name is Carrie. Please. <laughs> okay. All right. So you hang out in Glendale. When do you get out of Glendale, dude? Glendale's not that bad, man. Okay, but you have, but you left there. Well, yeah, because I was doing Second City and Improv Olympic and Groundlings and all that. When I met you, you were not living in Glendale. You weren't? I wasn't? I don't know. Uh, no, probably not. Okay. Um, I moved, uh, I was like, well, I got to get closer. So I got, I went to Studio City. Okay. Which is marginally closer. Right. It's just like right over the hill from Hollywood. So I lived there. You um, lived by the Brady Bunch house. Yeah, yeah I lived like a block away from there. Okay. So when do you get started? So I meet you at Second City, I think 1999. Does that sound right? Uh, yeah. I meet sense. you and Derek Waters. Mm -hmm. Yep. You met Derek Waters first. Derek, Derek Waters was the first, uh, was my first friend here. Yeah, we just got, we went, we were at Second City. It was like an orientation uh, with the guy who was the director at the time. Uh, Mar uh, Martin. Uh, Bar no, Martin DeMart. Not, oh, okay. Ma Martin DeMott. Not, I know, yeah, Farge. I knew that guy. Okay, you did? Yeah. Okay, well, we were just in this group thing, you know, like an orientation, and they were like, they, we just got randomly paired up. And really? We were, yeah, we, were, we became best of friends ever since. Yeah, you guys are. Okay, so you do that, <laughs> and then uh, I come on in the scene, I, I, I meet you. Mm -hmm. You my and I. My life changed. Well, my, mine too, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> Um, okay, so we start. Uh, why am I telling your story, dude? I don't. Well, you're telling your story. Uh, but I don't, it's not about me. It's about you. So no, but you brought, you brought your character into it. I gotta <laughs> well, you did. You're like, well, okay. that's when you met me. So I was like, all right. Okay. Craig, why is your beard so long right now? Dude, I know. I got to shave. Do you see me wiping the Yeah, dude. Too, so? All right. Sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So let's make this interesting for the people I think watching. It's interesting. 1999, I meet you. Yeah. And we all we we form like a, a, a an improv sketch comedy group called Ha Ha Fresh. Ha Ha Fresh. Didn't we have one before that? I feel uh, poor Ed. Poor Ed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> poor Ed Galvez. But we just shot, yeah. We just called it Ed. that because for some reason he couldn't. He couldn't. We, we had too many people. Yeah. And he we couldn't wanted do him, it. We wanted him to be in it, but the, there was like I don't know why, but the like the head of Second City. I'm blaming him. Sure. The head of Second City was like, you know, oh, you can only have 10 people. So we had to cut Ed and so we named the show Poor, Poor Ed in honor of him. Uh, and we came here to write while the Grove was under construction. Yeah. Man, can you imagine? Remember yeah. the, the, the fence that was up there? Yep. And then yep. I had a different cool car at that point. I what car did you have? I had a 1970 Dodge Polara. Yeah, you did. Is that the one you used to pick me up for the yeah. shows? Dude, yeah. that was a sweet car, dude. <laughs> it was sweet, but it was got eight miles a gallon. So. Okay, so you get hooked up with Chris Dennis, film artist associates. Yes, Clint uh, hooked me up with his <coughs> commercial agent. He was like, "Hey, I, I hooked you up." And then I mean, I hooked you up. You didn't even have a headshot. Chris. No. I, Chris took you. Uh, well, the funniest thing is that Chris was like, uh, "He's like, all right, well, you know, I want you to do these commercial acting workshops first. So I go, okay, and I didn't have money at that point because the, the stocks at that point had completely tanked I basically lost all the money I had I mean you know I didn't have much of an income so I, I go okay commercial acting workshop so then I just went home and waited like two weeks <laughs> and then I went back to him like all right yeah I did the workshop <laughs> and he's like okay let's you know we'll start sending you out it's funny and then I uh relatively quickly I booked a, a McDonald's commercial which one was the McDonald's one 
Yeah, what I, were you doing I in that one? I was a caddy, like in the like I was like I wasn't the main guy. I was okay. The main guy's caddy, but <clears throat> you still get paid the same if you're if you're not the main guy. Yeah. You get okay. Paid the same, even if you don't have any lines. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Go um, ahead. Anyway, so uh, I remember riding with you in the car, and you know, I'm like, hey, I booked this thing, and you were like, Craig. Your life's gonna change. You're gonna make some money. That's a that's a McDonald's commercial. You're gonna make some money. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm upset. This is it. It's I'm off and running. And then twenty five hundred dollars. Oh, I don't need that. It, it, it aired like regionally for like I think like six weeks. I made I think I made seven hundred dollars. Okay. Okay. This is funny because you know, yeah. I'm expecting it all. Yeah, I know. We're I'm all like, really expecting. Pumped? Yeah. Look, yeah, but you were really pumped. Yeah, I was like, really? <laughs> I'm like, oh, my, this well, is good. Happen. But then I, uh, just a few months after that, I, I booked a 7-Eleven uh, commercial and a Volkswagen commercial. Right, which were you great commercials. Yes, dude, oh, wow. the 7-Eleven commercial, because you had the smaller cup and yeah, your buddy yeah, had yeah. the bigger yeah, cup. Yeah, between our legs. Yeah, it so like it was kind of like a size yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, boy, I doubt that would ever happen. Anyway. But, um, yeah, those, and, and, I, and, booked, and I booked those, like, I booked those, I think they might have had to, like, they changed the shooting date. I remember in the Volkswagen is you're shutting the, the door the yeah, I'm on, on the I'm hood. The, oh yeah, I'm on the assembly line of a and the dr and the doctor. owner isn't driving. Yeah, he's already he's already he's so into the car that he, he got into it on the assembly yes. line before it's even finished. Yes. Those commercials were good. Now th that you know I didn't get rich or anything, but you know that I, I made some decent money. And then that allowed me to go, okay, I can legitimately focus on the you know now I don't have to get up at five AM anymore and try to day trade stocks. Which were dead at that time because the market had collapsed. But if you had bought money in those then, even after a collapse, you'd be. Yeah, set Craig, you I tell me that once a week. Not a joke, Apple stock at the time. I was like, I'm going to buy some Apple stock. And this is like, I think right. Oh, the iPhone was still way off, but Apple stock was $16 a share. Really? And it hadn't split. What's so, it right now? I couldn't even tell you now. But I it, literally, like a $10,000 investment in. 2000 this is i'm just pulling this out of my head uh, last time i heard that's worth like three or four hundred thousand dollars okay might even be more than that. enough about stocks craig we're uh, not here about wall street dude okay so i remember the first theatrical thing you booked was with ted danson is that right is that yeah. the first thing you booked yeah yeah about the rolling of the head no no no, no. <laughs> do you remember i booked something else and my agent, I was, I didn't have a theatrical agent, so I had my commercial agent handling it. Your commercial agent being Chris being, Dennis. Being Chris, well, I don't want to sandbag Chris, but, oh, but sorry. <laughs> they, they called, I, I auditioned for something else. They, they wanted to book me. You don't remember this? No. They, I don't remember okay. what happened to you. Oh, everything. no, no. Go it was ahead. a big thing when it happened. Okay. I'm surprised you don't. So they called and they booked me on the show and they left a message for Chris and he didn't check his messages. Chris. And they they had to move on to somebody else. So then somehow I think like the casting director emailed me or something, got a hold of me, he was like, hey, we tried to hire you. And I was like, I called Chris, I'm like, what happened? He's like, ah, oh, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was my first theatrical thing. The casting director felt so bad for me that she brought me in the next day for Ted Danson's show, uh, uh, what's it called? Do doctor one, or something. Yeah, Doctor, yeah. No, what was Do it? Dr. Ted. No, Becker. It was called Becker. Becker. So she felt so bad for me that she brought me in. And I had to audition still. Right. But it you know, it's kinda like we were giving this guy this, you know, two line part, which is very sweet. Do you know what the first part was? I don't remember. I really don't. It was nothing big. You know, it was the equivalent of what, you know, those small one or two line parts. It wasn't okay. Craig, would you say when you started Second City, that was the best thing you did for your whole career? It was the best thing I did in um, the fact that the people I met, like meeting yeah. you and meeting Derek. Uh, Simon Helberg. Si Simon Helberg, uh, Ben Hoffman. Ben Hoffman. Ben um, Ho you and Ben Hoffman had some good times yeah, we did doing a, your own shows. Yeah, we did a bunch of uh, sketch shows together. Um, just everyone. I, I met so many cool people there. I met Edel, Eric Edelstein, Ben Covet, uh, Gudrun, uh, Jeannie, Riddick, all, you know, I don't want to, Greg Field, I got to name them all off. Yeah, you don't have to name them all. Yeah, I hear you. But anyway, I mean, I've always said this. I joined Second City during a slow time in my life. 
and I never. Yeah, you were already established. Yeah, yeah we dude. were like all the people that just new fresh young blood that came into town. Yeah, and I was coming off a dry spell, and I needed to do something, and I did that, and that was literally still today. It's got the, like the best... portable Clint. Yeah, there you go. This is the best thing I ever did. Was <laughs> thank you, Craig. <laughs> best thing I ever did was unfortunately meet you. But anyway. <laughs> Okay, so no, but that no, I, I, I remember like you were like you know you were like that much older, but you had come out here when you were like eighteen. Eighteen, like really? you had a you had that. You were, Derek was like that. Derek moved out here very young. Yeah, I, I was twenty six when I moved here, but Derek, I think Derek was twenty or twenty one, right? Yeah, and then yeah, you were yeah, like you guys, but you were a stout, and but that was great because that. You know, you hooked Derek up with his aid. He was with Chris, right? I hooked. I think I hooked all you guys. Yeah. Up. So I, I mean, didn't. Chris hooked you guys. Up. Well, right. I right, just right. Well, saying introduced. But then, what's cool about that is that it did. You know, it, it inspired you to perform and get out there because like, yeah. you were in some kind of dry spell. I mean, I didn't even know that. But. Yeah, that was exactly it. And literally, as soon as I started back doing that, I started working yeah. again. That's so great. sometimes we have to do things when times get tough. Yeah, instead I, of just yeah i was joking about the portable clinic because it's not like no, times are tough for you but it is like you do have to like you know i'm i'm sitting here preaching this and i barely do it but you do have to like just produce something you have yeah. to create we were talking about that the other day just doing something that you enjoy doing i mean people like watching people who enjoy what they're doing yeah i mean exactly. when it comes to the, that kind yeah. of entertainment and, uh, go ahead, and i was just going to say and craig and we've all known this that you got to start creating your own content in this town yeah, dude, these days. Talk about young blood. I mean, it's kind of like the young blood has pushed all of this stuff. The, the YouTube, all the, you know, yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't the 40-year-olds doing that. You know, yeah. was, you see and you're like, you know, we're all going, wait, what? This 16-year-old this has 40 million, you know, views or what? So that it, it is that, like, refreshing of, you know, what to do. Yeah. You, you get stagnant. You're like, ah, oh, well, you know, I booked this. I'm good for six months. Hey, I just booked that, you know? And it's like, well, no, you got, you know. Chris. Especially now, you got to make your own stuff. Yeah, you do. Nobody cares. Like nobody, if you're sitting around just waiting for someone. Yeah, because I know so cool. many actors right now who are not working. So right, apparently, right. there's so much content, but no actors are getting hired right now. So if you want to make it in Hollywood, right. create your own content. Well, the pay has gone down quite a bit too. Yeah, so it's, like, it's like okay, you know, the days where you could book a commercial and make you know twenty or thirty thousand dollars. Those are very very rare now. What's the most you ever made on a commercial? Come on. I know. Well, uh -huh. But you don't have to ballpark. Just ballpark it. Just let them know, dude, that what a good commercial can do. Um, well, I mean, like, well, back in the day? Back in the day, well, you, dude. You, you have the great Well, example. I know, but I'm talking right, to well, you. When I moved here in the late 90s, like a great, well, not even, because I never got like one of those massive ones, but like an average, like really good commercial. It was probably 75 to 100,000. And what was that? Do you know? What was your best spot you've done? Jeez. Was it that Hyundai commercial? Oh yeah, that Don't Tell Mom commercial. Yeah, I that did was really a good well one. On that. And that was not. That was in the. That was in. That was like what? Maybe seven, eight years ago. Yeah, that was. I was a just good thinking one. about like the an early one. Well, the Volkswagen and some. You know, back then it was. It wasn't as focused as when you were here. Where it was just what? Like you were at the tail end of when it was just. Yeah. The cable was just starting. Yep. Yep. I moved in when everybody kept going, dude, you better get a new career because they've got these new cable channels and it's going to change everything. Right, right, right. And now well, it's... Tell, tell everyone how much a good commercial paid when you moved here. I mean, I mean that, dude... When you I, told me that, I'm like, my jaw dropped. Like, was it two, or three hundred thousand? Yeah, dude, two it, was crazy. it was crazy. It was literally crazy. And But my problem is, is I thought it would always, I would always make that much. Right. So I spent that much. Right, right. Well, that's... Um, and that's, here I am doing portable Clint. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what happens. You think, yeah. oh, it's the gravy train stuff. It, the gravy train always, I mean, unless you know, you become, well, even if you become like a serious regular, you know, well, no, those guys are pretty much set. Because they have people who are smart enough to handle their money. Don't you think if you book commercials often, it makes you lazy with your career? Yeah, absolutely. Right? I'm it guilty does. Of that. Yeah, dude. I, there's a lot because of Because of that pay. Because, yeah. because they paid so much, well, they, they still do, you know, relatively so much more than like you know a small guest star part or you know, something like that. they pay so much more so you're like well yeah i'm not doing you know 10 guest star parts a year but i'm doing two commercials and making more way more than those guys but yeah. it's not about that you're not doing it it's not just for the money you know you start just thinking of it that way you're like well i got money i got this big check I'm gonna sit back. I'm fine. Well, yeah. I don't need to do anything. I don't need to prove. What do I get? What do I? I'm set, dude. Uh, yeah, My I car's paid for. I got yeah. gas insurance. My, sure. What? 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 what 
I mean, it really does. I mean, you know, there's people out there who work a hell of a lot harder, you know, in different careers. But you know, if you're in this world, you, that is something, and you know, you, you fall into the sucker's game of it being all about money and just that's your success. Oh, if I make this, that's not your success. Craig, what was the worst day on a set for you? Jeez. I think I remember you telling me something about... So you know the worst day on my set more than I Well, I don't know. I just remember you tell me something uh, about the Hyundai commercial where they didn't tell you that you had to ski down a slope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's just a miscommunication. I mean, the commercial was great, and I love the director and everything. But in the audition... They were, it was like, okay, there's this part where you ski up to the sign. And it did, it never got communicated to me, and I never figured it, because it was just like, you know, I'm in this room, so I'm not actually going downhill or anything. So you skip to the sign. So I'm thinking, okay, it was cross country skiing, and we're going down a trail. Everything, you know, they bring me in again. No one ever asked me if I could actually ski. I, you know, I can cross country ski. Who can't do that? So, so. <laughs> So they're shooting this thing. This is a big production. Sure, I remember. I mean, you it was like a helicopter. Like the whole, like this is a big production. So we're shooting out at Disney's Disney Ranch, which is I guess Walt Disney's old ranch up in Santa Clara. Was that his own personal ranch, or was it always? I believe it was his own personal. Ranch. Okay, I'm not positive. Okay. So we're shooting it out. That's where Back to the Future, the barn scene. Yeah, yep, a lot yep. of tons of stuff. Drunk history. Drunk history of, was yeah. yeah, a lot of stuff. Anyway, so they're like, all right. Uh, we gotta get ready for the, the, the skis. You know, I shot, shot one scene in a certain area. And it's like, it's like 100 degrees out, easily. Cause this is kind of like, you know, it's, it's a little bit in the desert there. So I'm like, all right, well, yeah, where are we gonna shoot the ski scene? And then they get in the van, they drive me over to it. The white van? Yeah, they drive me over to where the ski she the scene's being shot. And it's up on the side of a mountain and they got the entire mountain, they got like three snow machines going. It's 100 degrees out and the mountain is covered <laughs> with snow. And I'm like, I'm like, wow, and I still didn't piece it together. I'm like, I'm like, it looks like you wouldn't know this is fake. It was incredible, like giant snow machines and everything. And then I get out and they put me in the, they, you know, they put me in this, uh, they put me in snow gear, you know, it's sure, 100 degrees sure. out. I mean, I'm in like insulated thermals. So I'm dying, I'm, I'm like dying, like really bad. Like the way they had to bring a big fan and put it on my face. And I got this little kid with me they bring me out there and they're like, all right, they're like, okay, come up here. And, and they were like helping me walk up. And I'm like, I, I, it finally dawns on me because they're walking me up sideways up this like kind of a, a little bit of a mountain. And they're not small. Yeah. They have, <laughs> they walk me up probably like 40 feet and there's this giant green screen there. And they're like, all right, what we want you to do, well, we just walked up, you're going to jump and ski down there <laughs> and you got to stop before this quarter million dollar green screen. <sighs> and I'm like, I'm like, hey. All the right. discussion of you skiing never came Dude, up. Dude, it ne had never come up. So then, uh, so then, we do the first thing, and like you know, like are right, you looking at the sign? And then now go down the hill, and I'm like, and I I slide down, and then when I'm like halfway down, I lay back to stop myself because <laughs> I don't know how to stop myself. And you know this kid, this kid they had, yeah, he yeah. had a he had a ski stunt. <laughs> they didn't have it. Why didn't you have that for me? Like, it wasn't the kid I shot the rest of the commercial with. They're like, I'm like, hey, how's it going? It's like some, like, X Games, like, nine-year-old. Right. He's like, sup? So <laughs> He jumps off the, you know, he's got the skis, you know, he's doing a, you know, he's really, and just looking at me, like, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to, I'm either going to break my legs or I'm going to go through this green screen, this giant one-piece, you know, 40-foot green screen. So then I, after that first take, the director comes up to me and he goes, can you ski? <laughs> I mean, like he was, you could oh, tell he was mad. And I'm like, I'm like, man, I thought no one mentioned it was like this kind of ski. I thought it was like cross country ski. And he's like, oh. wait, like, Craig, really Craig, upset, did, man. okay. You got to admit this. Did they ask you somewhere along the way? Can you ski? And you kind of well, said probably, yes. Probably, but, but uh, look, you know, it, it was probably my fault, but, <laughs> But because of the audition, for some somehow in my head, I just because it was never in the audition. In the audition was literally like you look at the sign and then you go off frame. 
you know, I thought, okay, this is cross country. I, I in my mind, I really just thought cross country. Okay, so he he comes up, says think... to you, I get it, I get it. So he he's disappointed in you. What's yeah, the deal? He's disappointed. I mean, yes, because it probably really did reek like yeah. I lied yeah. on purpose exactly. to get the job. Yeah, dude. Which I, I totally would have done. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. But, but I I honestly, and I told him like, man, I really thought this was cross country skiing. And man, he was he was he was not happy. <laughs> So we kept trying to do it, and, and then I hear him. I hear him. You know, I hear him on one of the walkie talkies or whatever. I just hear him go, "We'll just have to edit it." <laughs> I, I felt so bad. Oh, man. Craig, felt, way to but go! But the, the whole time I'm trying to do is, is the stress of that, but also I'm pouring Sweaty. sweat. And I'm like, like I can't. I'm trying to do it, and I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna do it. And if I break my leg, whatever, I gotta do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you get this million dollar production. Yeah. I can't be. You know, I, I don't want to let him down. So I tried, but. And then the final product, you know. It was a great commercial. Well, they edited it. Probably where it would have been edited. And yeah. I mean, I can't. It's his artistic vision. It's you doing a whole bunch of... And I did compromise it. You did. You did compromise it. Yeah, it's a, I'm sorry for that. You, it was a commercial. You doing a whole bunch of fun stuff with your kids. And you kept saying, don't tell yeah, mom, don't, don't tell, tell mom. mom, don't tell mom. Okay, which is called don't tell mom. Yeah. Okay, Craig, we got to start winding down. Not necessarily wow. right this second, but All we got to right. start winding down. All right. We're going to start that. We're going to start at the end and move kind of like in the middle. The last big commercial that you did was for the Super Bowl. Yeah. Is that correct? Incidentally, another Hyundai commercial. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Was it any with of the Jason same Bateman. people? No, 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 no. I'm sorry, what what name did you Jason. just drop? Well, it was with Jason Bateman. That's why people oh. didn't know it. You wouldn't know it. From oh, me. okay. That everyone, a lot of people know that. It was a pretty famous Super Bowl. I mean, they, did you hang out with Jason Bateman? Just on the side. Was it, he, has, he has nothing to do. Why would he have anything to do with me? But, but no small talk, <laughs> nothing like that? Hey, how's it going? Did he introduce himself to you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's a very nice guy. How did he very introduce nice. him? Did he say his name, Jason, or were you? Were no, he walked to... right in and said, "He's like, he's like, hi, how you doing, I'm Jason?" I'm like, "Hi, okay. Craig." And he was very, oh, dude, he's, yeah. And he I really, love that dude. He stays on like when we were filming that. Like, if he did a take, like he would be like, "No, no, we gotta do it." Like he would, I mean, over and over. Like he's a perfectionist. Like to where I was shocked. Like man, I thought it was great, and he felt something was wrong about it. And he would want to do it over and over and over again. And, yeah, he's he, he yeah he's definitely uh, well, he's an actually, actor's actor's. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's a good guy. He's dude. been doing it for a long time. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's your move was one of my favorite shows when he was a kid. Wow. Okay, Craig, you've written on a show, a couple of shows. Yeah. Uh, you written on the Ben Hoffman show. Yeah. yeah. What else? What other show did you write on? Uh, that's that's about. Well, it. no, that's but you did it. another one. You did the one. What was the one with um, Derek uh, that AJ was in that you wrote? Remember, she was major, oh, my oh, daughter. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, it's LOL, uh, HBO. It's LOL, yeah, oh, no, it was uh, H no, no, it was uh, HBO. It was the Funnier Die Presents thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. That was fun. Yeah, yeah Craig. That, that one with, yeah, it was, I wrote, well, we all wrote that sketch of the, the drunk driving superhero. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, dude, my daughter's in it, yes. And his crashes end up saving people. <laughs> I mean, it was fun. Okay, Craig. Why did you move out to Los Angeles, California? What was the reason? What was the goal back then? Well, I think a lot of people, not you, but a lot of people damaged goods from their childhood, seeking approval, wanting people to, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't really have a good childhood. So my, it was like a constant like need for people to like me and laugh at me and tell me I'm good, you know, because I was starved of that. You sure. Know? So I think that's a lot of people. Do you ask people a lot of people that question? I, do they answer it honestly like that? No, no. Dude, honesty. Maybe it's just me. I think it is, but go ahead. <laughs> well, no, I just, you know, I didn't have a, a good childhood, so it was like always seeking approval. It's, it's like the typical, stereotypical thing, but it was that. It was like, hey, I'm going to make my mark, you know? I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm going to, I'm going to, because in my mind, you know, that equals love and that, you know. It's okay. kind of sad, but that's the truth. So 30 years later, now that you're here 30 years. Um, I'm not here 30 years. I'm here what, years. What is the goal now? What do you want to achieve? Don't say just continue working. Give me give me a goal. What, what's your goal? Well, I think it's to be loved stuff. <laughs> okay. to be lo I mean, isn't that why? Like, you know, I don't now, know. I mean, now, is now you actually get it, you know, when you go on YouTube or whatever, you get an actual number count. How many people love me? Like, you can actually see oh, the numbers. That's true. You know, that's before true. it was like, you know, how many likes? I mean, it really is that. It's like, you know, I, I say love, but it's the same as the like button, right? But you're the same guy who's saying that you're the same guy who doesn't have a Facebook account or an Instagram account. No, I got rid of that. I, I, it, just, it just seemed like, it, I mean, I know that's probably detrimental to my career, but it really did seem like it was getting, 
like these, you know, groups and it was dividing people. I saw it pretty early. No, I, I know. Really did. I know you did. I'm I like, know man, you did. people are just hating each other. They get so angry at each other for saying something, expressing something. So I'm like, all right, I'm out of here. I'll, I'll say the wrong joke and I'll never yeah. work again. You know, Craig, I'll, but you you still have one of the funniest Facebook jokes that I've ever oh, no. seen. Is it all right to say? Well, yeah, this what one is. That? This one is. It's the one where you kept changing your birthday on Facebook <laughs> and every day for like a week, it was your birthday and people got mad. Dude, you, <laughs> like, like I was basically mocking the fact that everyone mindlessly wishes everyone a happy birthday because it pops in the thing. And this was early on in Facebook when you could, you could just change your birthday. You can't do that now. No. But back then it was like you could change it. So at the strike of midnight every day, I would change it to the, or at like 1150, you know, whatever, I would change my birthday to the next day. And then that morning, happy birthday, oh, happy birthday. And then I started to notice that some people were wishing me birthday, happy birthday, four or five times in a row. Like, I was like, man, and, and you know, I didn't say anything, but then people figured it out and they're like, I was getting messages like, oh, what, you're not getting enough attention, you gotta make fun of people. I was like, <laughs> I mean, that contributed to me yeah, leaving. Like, yeah, people I remember. Got mad. Yeah, people yeah. unfriended me yeah. because I'm, how dare I make fun of, <laughs> of what? birthdays? Yeah, the fact that people might, like, that's your problem. Like, and then, yeah, just too many things like that where people would get angry about it. So, uh, that was a good joke. It was, it a, was a great joke. joke. I, loved a it. Joke. I loved it. I would have kept that going for months. Yeah, dude. But then I literally stopped because I was like, do people think I'm doing this because I'm an attention? Like, they thought I was doing it because I wanted the happy birthday yeah. wish. Yeah. Like, they thought it was like some kind of an attention whore where I needed that. Yeah, like, I... No, no, it wasn't about that. It wasn't, I didn't really, those happy birthday wishes were not important to me. That was a funny backlash to you because it was a major backlash. People got really I, angry. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it really and, and is. That, like, even now, like, it's just got, well, I don't know if it's gotten worse. I'm not on there, but you just hear stories of like, oh, you know, James Gunn or whatever made a joke and yeah. he's lost it. Like, what? It's a joke. Man. Yeah, yeah. The jokes. Craig, let me tell you why I love you, dude. And I do love you. Well, I love so you, you got my approval. Thank but you. Craig, you're, you're, Craig, everybody should have a Craig in their life because Craig will send me the funniest texts. Really? He will tell me, well, I don't tell you what, that. I'll tell you it's my birthday? No, but you like, text me those fun pictures every day, All anything, right. stuff like that. Yeah. Like the cigarette one. And... Yeah. All right, uh, go on, go you on. you know it, all the new stuff that's coming out. Uh, well, you know. Yeah, you pay attention to a lot of stuff that I dig. So I appreciate you as a good friend. Craig thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you know that's one thing. It's funny because I you know I want love and approval. I found out that hey, if I know how to fix things for people. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, fix things. He fixed my computer one time. Lost all my music. Yeah, it was. I felt bad about it. <laughs> but in my defense, it was, Literally. It was like all illegally downloaded music. Hey, shut up, dude. <laughs> it was like the dawn of <laughs> Napster. It was, it was the dawn of like, Napster. No, anyway, but yeah, no, I found that like, hey, if I could fix it. Like, when I was young, like, oh, I could fix my friend's bike. Or, yeah, yeah, I could fix that. You know, you know, people are like, oh, cool, man. You know, so, so I, well, and also my father. My father got me into like, you know, fixing things. You know. Anyway, that, my point is, is that knowing of things, you know, that are happening, like, tech stuff or whatever it just it all comes from that like wanting yeah. to know the news hey man check this out well craig just know you're enough dude you don't need to do all that stuff you're an awesome guy craig well, instead do me a favor yeah. anything else i need to know about you before we shut her down um no i'm gonna shave my beard why the mustache part's too much oh you're gonna just keep a mu you're gonna grow a mustache no i'm gonna i'm gonna shave the must well not shave it but i'll trim it because right now when i drink something it gets caught and it's gross Craig, you're not afraid to wear your Birkenstocks without socks, are you? No. Okay. It's funny because I... Well, don't turn it off yet. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I wore Birkenstocks when they first got cool in like 1989. And I've been wearing them. I've never stopped wearing them. Unfortunately, he's telling the truth. My girlfriend makes fun of... Oh, yeah, please, dude, and, and just, then all of a sudden they became cool. Your feet, yeah, right, and then they became cool. Now they're cool. Now I walk around and I see with people oh, look who wear socks. Teenagers are all no, the kid, they're all wearing Birkenstocks. Well, because they're kids. They're so, they're well, you're not... saying you're saying I should wear socks with them? Yes. So that, I thought Craig, that was the nerve. I don't want to see your toes, dude. I don't want to see your feet when I'm having lunch with you. Well, I thought that that was the nerd thing. You're not supposed to wear the socks with it. No. So Craig, you're saying that that's yes, the cool thing now? Yes. Wear what? the socks. Well, it's okay. summer. I'm gonna wear socks. Well, please. All right. Sorry, that wasn't a bit. Craig, tell everybody bye. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Clint.